Good day. Today I have another project for you. It is a web interface for Apache Logs parser that we will build with the Flask framework. The parser explanation has some distinctions from the previous one, so to try this version will be a good idea. The parser works as follows. I choose a log file, click submit button, and the parser counts requests from each IP address and shows the results here in the first block and in the second block. It suggests to add these lines to an htaccess file to ban an attacker. But the main idea of this tutorial is to show how to create such a web interface for any Python script. If you are interested, keep watching. Let's create a folder for a project. Next, I'm opening a terminal and create a virtual environment with virtual env. Dash dash python equals to python3. I'm specifying a certain python version and venv. It is a name of the virtual environment. And I have to activate my virtual environment and to do it I am using the command source venv, the name of the virtual environment, bin folder activate script. My virtual environment was activated and I can see a small hint about it on the left side of the command line. Next I am creating a new folder for a project. Then I change directory with the cd command and from the app directory I start the Atom editor. You can start any other editor you want. If you start Atom or Visual Studio Code from console with activated virtual environment like I did, these editors will understand that you are working within the virtual environments and will use only those libraries that was installed to the current virtual environment. Now I am pasting here the prepared log file. The link to the Dropbox with it will be in the description to the video. And all preparations we have done. And I start with creating logs parser and after that we will create a web interface for it with the Flask framework. I am creating a new file, let's say it will be parser app py. And now let's create an entry point, an if main block. This block checks whether the file parser app py was run directly from the console or not. If the file is running from the console, its name attribute will be equal to main. But if the file will be imported to another script, then its name attribute will contain the name of this file. In this case, its name attribute will be equal to the parser app py. And thus, uh, this if condition uh, will return false and a main function will not be called. That is why if main block is an entry point of any Python program. Next. I am creating the main function, pass for a while, and now I need to import the regular expression module, import re. Next, I have to open a log file and read its content. When we are working with file objects, a right practice is to use the context manager with. So here with uh, I'm calling the open function and passing into it a file name of the log inside quotes and then I'm saving opened file to a new variable let's say f the result of this expression is an opened file object now I want to read its content and to do it I'm using the read method I'm creating a new variable data that equals to f read. 
we can check our data variable print it out and I run the script next we have to find all IP addresses throughout the log file and just like last time to search for all IP addresses we will use a search patterns and these search patterns are regular expressions and when we will write a search pattern we will use a find all method to get a list filled with search results um, but now let's create a new variable let's say pattern that equals to an empty string for a while and uh, when we are working with regular expressions it is a good idea to use some validating services I like to use regex101.com choose here python and let's input here some testing strings I need some text here some IP addresses and I want to add some text here any text and now we need a some search pattern to find only IP addresses inside the mass of the text each IP consists of four parts separated by dots and each part can consist of one to three digits so I'm starting with backslash D that means a digit between 0 to 9 and the regex 101 have highlighted all digits in the testing text and I'd like to focus your attention that each highlighted digit is an independent search result that means if we will use a find all method right now we will get a list of these digits something like this for instance 1 2 7 zero etc just a digits but not IPs so I'm going on and I want to specify a dot and uh, if I put here a dot the regex 101 besides dots also highlighted underscore here exclamation mark here and in the top lines it excludes dot and digit one in the first line because the single dot in regular expressions language means any symbol any and our regular expression now means that we are looking for two symbols where the first symbol is a digit and the second symbol is any symbol so that is why regex 101 excludes here a single dot and here a single digit one because it looked for two symbols but not one okay we don't need any symbol here we need exactly the dot symbol and to specify exactly the dot symbol I have escape a dot and to use a paired backslash and a dot so here I am inserting backslash and now we can see that regex 101 highlighted all matches of two symbols where the first symbol is a digit and the second one is a dot but each part of an IP address consists of one to three digits and to specify the range of digits quantity I have to use curly brackets here and inside I'm specifying the range 1,3 now we can see that this pattern works for any part of each IP address but is only one part but we need an entire IP and to get entire IP I just copy in this expression four times two three four and delete ending dot and ending backslash and that's all our regular expression is ready and I am copying it from here to our pattern variable delete it 
and at the beginning of the string I am specifying the R letter that means raw string notation and now I am creating an IPS variable that equals to the call of find all method of the RE module. At the first argument the find all method takes what we are looking for. We are looking for any text that matches our regular expression. That is variable pattern. The second argument is where we are looking for. We are looking for IPs in the data variable. Let's print it out to check. All right, we got all IPs. Next step is to count the quantity of requests from each IP. And the most convenient and nice way to do it is to use the counter class from the collections module. So I need to import it from collections import counter. Here I am creating the results variable that equals to the call of counter class and I am passing into the counters constructor the IPS list with all IP addresses. More detailed explanation about work of the counter class was in the last video, a batch logs parsing with Python. The link will be here at the right corner and at the description to the video. Now I just remind you that count a class returns the dictionary where keys are our IPs and the values of the keys are their counts. And the counter class has a special method most common. I am calling it most common. That takes as an argument a quantity of the most common elements or items. In our case it will be the most common IP addresses. So I am passing into the most common method number, let's say 10, and we can print out the results variable. And now, as you can see, we get a list of tuples, where the first element of each tuple is an IP and the second element of each tuple is a counts. We can iterate this list of tuples in a for loop. So I'm starting a new for loop for each key and value in IPS list. And uh, on each iteration of the for loop, Python will unpack current tuple to the key and the value variables. The first element of the tuple will pass to the key variable and the second one to the value variable. And inside the for loop in its body, I am calling the print function and passing into it a string with the f string notation. Here I'd like to paste a key and here a value. The values of the key variable and the value variable will be automatically substituted to the key and the value fields of the string. So I am saving and trying too many values to unpack. I am sorry. Results, of course. A results variable. We have done our parser. Logs parser is ready. Um, but if you wish, you can refactor this code. And now I want to build a web interface to this parser. Now I am opening up a terminal and I am installing a flask. pip install flask. Done. Then I am comment this function out and I have to import the flask from flask import flask class. Then 
I have to create an instance of the Flask class. I am creating a new variable app that equals to the Flask class that takes the name attribute as an argument. It is an important argument. It is referencing to the current file to parser app py. And from the path to the file, Flask will determine other paths uh, to its de dependencies, like path to a folder with CSS files, to templates folder, etc. Then in our initializing block, I will call a run method and pass into it debug equals to true. If debug is true, then the Flask will automatically restart the app each time I make changes to the project files. And now we can start out our Flask app address already in use. And now we can see that the dev server was started at local host and 5000 port number. So I am opening it up and we can see that server returns as 404 not found error. It means that the server responded us, but we did nothing yet. So we got 404 error. Then let's create a view function, a handler function that will handling requests to the root URL of our app. So I'm going to call the road method of the flask instance at sign app variable dot road method and as an argument I'm passing into it a slash. A slash means a root URL address. Next I'm defining index function that will return a traditional string hello world save and refresh the page. I got hello world string. Okay. What does the road decorator? The road decorator is binding a certain view function, a handler function, to a certain URL address that was passed into it as an argument. Under the hood, Flask creates a dictionary that looks something like this. A dictionary where a key is um, some URL, for instance, a block, and the value of the key is a function that will handle requests to this URL. And now we have to render at this page an HTML form for choosing files and a button to run the parser. Also, we have to make a block to show results. Next, to use strings like this is a very inconvenient way to show user any information. And usually HTML templates are used for such tasks. To use HTML templates with our Flask application, I have to import the function render template from flask import render template and now the index function will return a result of the render template function render template and the first argument that it takes is a name of HTML template. It is a name of HTML file. It will be base HTML. All templates are stored at the templates folder by default. So we have to create the templates folder. Templates. And now I have to create a base HTML file. Emmet will help me to create a structure. I put here an exclamation mark and press stop. Then I want to change title 
of the document it will be a patch logs parser save save and we can restart the page nothing yet but uh, we got a title of the page apache logs parser so we can see that base html was rendered usually the base html is the most abstract template that contains all elements of the website that are common for every page of the site such as main menu name of the website footer links to javascript files links to css files etc and unique information of the each page is inserted through the special blocks like this curly brackets percent sign percent signed a keyword block and a name of the block content for instance then i have to close this block and block keyword here a content that should be inserted here at the block is in the other templates inside blocks with the same name content so i'm going to create a new html template with the name index index html and now i have to specify that index html file is extending the base html template extends and inside quotes i have to specify the name of the extended template it will be base html and now i am creating a block of content with the same name that i used in the base html template it was block content and inside block i create an h1 tag with a patch logs parser we can save it all files and now i should change the rendered template name in the call of the render template function to index html save and refresh the page and we can see that here is our h1 header from index html file and apache logs parser a title specified in base html and the process of extending templates by other templates is called template inheritance in flask and Django. now i want to use bootstrap for styles so i'm going to the get bootstrap dot com copy this link and paste it in base html file here refresh the page and i can see that styles were applied okay a next step is to create a form for choosing a log file and uh, to use our parser in the index view i am going to the documentation bootstrap page i'm looking for components tab and here i need forms and now i am looking file picker form this one copy and i am pasting it here i am deleting label tag and i no need id now i should add some attributes to the form the first attribute is an http method we are sending a log file to a server we are posting it so it is a post method and thus 
I am adding to the form tag a method attribute that equals to post between quotes, single or double quotes. Next attribute that I have to add is a path to a function that will handle the data submitted by the form. And we have the index view function for that. And so I am adding to the form an action attribute that equals to the following expression. Between single or double quote, I'm using doubled curly brackets. Doubled curly brackets means that I'm inserting some value to the HTML template. Then inside doubled curly brackets, I'm calling the URL for function and I am passing into it a name of a function that will handle the post request, the submitted file. It will be index function. Doubled curly brackets means substitution of a value to an HTML file. I want to focus your attention that the index here is the name of the index function, but not a name of the template index HTML. It's a function name. And the URL for function here will generate the path to the index view function. And the last attribute I have to add is an attribute that indicates that the form accepts files. I have to explicitly determine the encoding type. So I am adding the enc type attribute that equals to multi part slash form dash data. And now I have to add one more attribute to the input tag here. I have to add the name attribute that equals, uh, let's say, log file. What is the name attribute? The Flask has a special object request that keeps all information about the certain request. Also, the request object keeps the files that users send to our application. And inside the request object, these files are stored at a special dictionary with the name files. And the value of the name attribute of the input tag is the key of the files dictionary where the certain file is stored. So you can specify here any name you want. Next, I want to add a button to our form. Button type submit class equals to btn btn primary it's a color btn sm small it's a size save refresh i forgot the text submit f5 button and the form okay now I have to write a body of the index view function. Our form is sending to the application files via a post request. So I have to specify that the index function accepts post requests. I am passing into the road decorator the second argument methods that equals to a list. The first element of the list will be post and the second will be get. Next, a user sent us a file. It was saved to the files attribute of the request object. And now we have to get the content of the file from the request object. And before I start, I need to import the request object. So here from flask import request. Then inside the index function, 
I have to check what type of HTTP requests got our application, GET request or POST request. Because depending on the type of HTTP request, our application will act differently. With an incoming GET request, our app should simply render the form. And with incoming a POST request, our app should do multiple different things. So I'm starting a new if condition. <coughs> if request object dot method equals equals to POST pass for a while and else else means that it was a get request pasted here and now I have to reach to a sended file as I said before files are stored at the files attribute of the request object I am creating a new variable let's say log that equals to the request object dot files files it's a dictionary so I have to pass into it a key to get a value the key of the files dictionary with the sended file is a value of the name attribute of the input tag log file copy and here I paste it I got the file and I need to read it so I am calling the read method read and now I have encountered uh, the important detail the flask does not read the file as a unicode string it reads a file like a bytes sequence so I have to convert the bytes data type to the string data type and I can do that by two ways the first one let's create a new variable txt that equals to str function string that will take as the first argument our log variable and the second utf8 encoding type it is the first way and the second is txt equals to str function log it is a bytes data type that has a method and code and we have to specify encoding utf8 next i have to handle the log data and to do it i'm going to use the parser function that we have wrote before this one so I am create a new function let's say parse that will take data as an argument and I paste here these lines uncommented indentation I am delete a for loop and the parse function will return the results variable this one with the most common results and now I want to send logs data to a parse function and get back its results so inside index view function I am creating the result variable that equals the following I'm calling the parse function and pass into it the txt variable then I have to send our data from the index view function to a template how to do that to send data to a template I have to pass into the render template function a new argument just for illustration I create a name a variable that equals to let's say Santa Claus and the name of the new argument of the render template function will be let's say from 
index view that equals to the name variable and the name of the argument I mean from index view will be used in the template index HTML here so I'm specifying in the index HTML a new statement block with double curly brackets and paste here the name of the argument of the render template function that is from index view let's check the index view i specified the name variable inside post request handling so i move it to the get in the else block save and refresh the page and now we can see santa claus the value of the from index view variable that was defined in the index function so in the same way i am passing to the render template function the results variable i delete it here return render template index html then i'm creating a new argument ips let's say that equals to the result variable and uh, i change the name of the variable to ips save refresh choose file log open submit and we can see that our ips list was rendered as a string but i want to separate results from each other and to wrap each ip with the paragraph tag the p tag to do it i have to iterate ips list with the for loop directly in the index html template and for such purposes, the Flask provides special block with the name for. And for loops inside a template should be defined the same way like in a regular Python script. And also, I want to remind you that our IPS list is a list of tuples. So I am creating a new expression block for here I'm closing it and for and here for each IP and counts in IPS variable in each iteration of the for loop IP variable will contain the first element of a certain tuple and the counts variable will contain the second element of the tuple and inside the for block i'm specifying a paragraph tag and here i want to paste the value of the ip variable and here to paste the value of the counts variable f5 okay all works well right click inspect we can see p tags here for each ip address the next step i want to prepare the text for an htaccess file to ban attackers and i return now to the index function and here I'm creating a new variable ban that equals to an empty list. Then I'm starting a new for loop for key value in result. Now I'd like to check the quantity of requests from each IP and to set a threshold. I mean that I want to ban the IP addresses if the quantity of requests from exceeds, let's say, 500 requests or maybe 100. It doesn't really matter, but for the video purposes, I will use 
100 requests. So if a value more than 100, then the ban list will be appended by the dictionary where the first key will be IP and the value of the IP key will be the key variable and the second key will be counts with the value of value variable this one and now IPS variable will be equals to the ban list and now I have to correct the for loop inside the index HTML template and now IPS variable is a list of dictionaries so on each iteration of the for loop the IP variable will contain a dictionary so let's rename IP to item and here will be item IP and here item counts IP counts let's check how it works all works as we expected we got six results that are more than 100 requests okay all works except the ban suggestions and let's create a new for loop with the following content deny from and I need here only IP F5 and we can see that our backend is working well and now I want to have the UI looks nicer and first I want to center the content of the page then I want to add more space between each block of information header form this block and this block and I want to have both buttons to be in one row let's start to align content by center I am opening base HTML and I wrap the block content with the text uh, Ctrl Alt W and it will be a div with a container class and the inner div with a row class. It is a basic bootstrap layout. Next, I am adding to the container div the MT5 class, that means margin top 5, and MB5, that means margin bottom 5, and it looks like this. I have margins here from the top and from the bottom. Okay, next. I want to add to the div with a row class four additional classes. The first one is the call six class. That means that the div will take six bootstrap columns. The second one is a mx auto. That means that the div with the row class will be aligned by center of the screen. And now I want to justify center all content within the div with raw class and it is achieved with the flex column class and align items center f5 next I'm going to correct the form view and uh, I'm going to the index HTML file and uh, to the form tag I am adding class attribute and I want to add MT5 margin top 5 class
next to the inner div with the form group class I am adding div flex class and the justify content between class the justify content between means that the first and the last items input and button are pushed to the edges of the parent container div class form group this one and all free space between them is distributed evenly between other items there are only two items so there are just pushed to the edges f5 we got one row okay next and now i want to wrap each for loop with div with mt5 class and this one f5 okay let's check again and again click submit okay and bad request key error it means there is no file and i have to add for input tag a required attribute f5 submit okay please select a file that's all for now thanks for watching if you like the video please like it and subscribe